look, you do not need to leave a kid a dollar if you're going to disinherit them. In fact, it could cause more probate headaches than anything. All you got to do is just disinherit them. Hi, Jeff Marsacci, the Plain English Attorney, and welcome to the video. Today, we're going to talk about how to disinherit a child from your estate plan. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, look, there are tons of different reasons, and a lot of the situations that my clients have come to me with over the years, it's, yeah, they either they should disinherit them, or uh, perhaps there's a certain child that needs their share completely protected, never given exactly to them. It's in the hands of a trustee. But what we're talking about today is how to disinherit the child. It's, nope, they're not getting anything. That's it. End of story. And um, I think there's a lot of misinformation that floats around there that, oh, you should give them a dollar. Okay. You don't need to give them anything. And I'm going to start with this point that it's your estate plan. Nobody except a spouse is entitled to anything. So check state law wherever your jurisdiction is. You can't disinherit a spouse in most states, if not all states. They've got to get some portion, some piece that is mandatory and that could just be through probate now there are some exceptions to that uh, often if it's a later in life marriage there may be a premarital agreement that's basically saying what's yours is yours what's mine is mine i can do whatever i want with my estate and they've signed some kind of waiver somewhere in the plan that they're going to not seek that, quote, elective share. They're not going to seek it. So there's a way to protect for that. But when it comes to kids, they, they're not entitled to anything if you want to put together a plan that cuts them out. Well, where did this whole give them a dollar thing come from? And why shouldn't you just go ahead and do that? Well, there's it's proving your competency that you have to know who your kids are, who are the, quote, natural heirs of your bounty. You have to know what you have, and you have to have some kind of basic understanding of what you're doing by signing this document. Typically, they talk about this in the context of a will. All right, that's proving your competency. If you have three kids and you just mentioned I'm leaving everything equally to these two children, then it's like, wait a minute, you couldn't have been in sound mind because you forgot about the other one. Oh, we'll leave them a dollar. Don't, you don't have to leave, again, you don't have to leave them anything. You just have to mention that they're a child. If you think it's important for educational videos like this to get out there, then please help us out by subscribing to the channel. Some of the language in the early parts of a will, and we do this in a revocable living trust. Here are the names of the kids, and maybe we put in the dates of birth. And then you mentioned that maybe a child, one of them is getting disinherited. They're not going to receive anything. And that's it. Well, okay, why shouldn't you just give them a dollar? In probate, in a, with a will, if you leave them a dollar, they have to get a dollar, which means now when you get to the final distribution, up until the final distribution stage, you've got to keep sending them notices because they're a beneficiary. And then when you get to that last part, uh, the typical practical recommendation is, okay, you need to have them sign off that they've gotten their share and they're happy with it. What kid is going to be happy that you gave them that one dollar? It's only going to potentially open the door for them yelling and screaming, or at the very least, they're not going to sign the paperwork. And now you've got to find some workaround. You got to go to the court and say, look, they're just not signing this paper. Why put your estate through that crap when all you can do is just mention they don't get anything? I didn't forget them. They got everything. They, you know, they're not getting anything. Everything else is going to the other kids or these other beneficiaries. 
That's it. None of this dollar stuff. Well, how, you know, there was a case in law school where a child successfully argued that the parents, quote, couldn't have been in their right mind and ended up getting a third of the family fortune because there were two other siblings that were getting the money. Oh, well, how did this happen? All right. In law school, I learned about this case. There was an Orthodox Jewish family, and I guess one of one son married outside the religion, and therefore, quote, that son was dead to them. All right, so they went to the estate planning attorney. How many kids do you have? Two. So no deceased children. No. They just didn't mention them. That's how the contest came in, and he was able to get, oh, obviously they weren't of sound mind. And they went through this, well, look, in the Jewish faith, they were, he was declared dead to them, and as if he never existed, and blah, 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 blah. blah. Look, that's religious doctrine. This is the legal reality of, hey, you need to say who your kids are. And in this case, it was in conflict and if they were up front with the attorney, the attorney could have done, and what I would have done is, okay, they have three children. One is considered, according to their faith, dead to them, and therefore they are disinherited, and here's this child's name. That's it. Would have taken care of it. Well, okay, what if you want to potentially stave off some kind of contest? You don't do that by giving him $1, it's got to be something substantial enough that when given the choice, take this and shut up or lose it. So you can put in a provision stating if they're not happy, then they're not, and they contest this plan, then they get that taken away. So let's just say it's a $2 million estate and they go, all right. Let's give them $50,000. That's a substantial amount of money. If it's, again, th three kids and everything else is going to two of them, it's not like they're getting a third of $2 million. But no, look, it's $50,000. And if you contest this, you could lose the $50,000. All right, just take it and go. So that's if you're going to leave a sum of money, a dollar isn't going to do that these days. It's got to be substantial enough. But again, most of the time, it's just leave them nothing. So here's a story, and this is something that uh, not one of my clients, in fact, I think it was NPR, or it was on my way to do a seminar on estate planning, and um, the story came up that there was a gentleman who owned very successful business and he had four kids one of them was quote the black sheep of the family all right so you the black sheep of the family he didn't cut them out i'm leaving them a hundred thousand dollars and the rest of my kids are getting the millions oh that's great that's wonderful all right didn't work out the way he thought 2000 came around he was highly invested in tech stocks took a nosedive okay then he ends up with cancer and they didn't say it but because of it all the quote high medical bills he either didn't have health insurance or had very crappy health insurance and therefore he ended up having to liquidate a bunch of money started to get the business to come back 2008 hit and it crashed and then he died after that so he was bragging about the black sheep of the sun and it's only getting $100,000 and the rest of the kids getting the family fortune. The kid getting the $100,000 ended up getting more than anybody else. Okay, so what could you do in that instance? It's just a very simple fix to the language, which I, I don't know if this guy did his own will, which believe it or not there are people who are very highly successful and think they can do anything even if it's not in their realm like yeah i'll go ahead and do my own will went, well okay if you end up screwing it up 
He left the $100,000 to his kid, but the limiting language could have been or 1% of the estate or half a percent, whichever is less. So, okay, you're, if he had millions upon millions and there's $100,000, oh yeah, the $100,000 is less than what would have been 1%. When everything crashed and it ended up maybe say being two hundred thousand total for the estate, well, he would have gotten one percent, which is a lot less than a hundred thousand, because a hundred thousand is half. So there are ways to do this to limit it, but yet still leave something to a beneficiary. So if there's a big takeaway from this, it's look, you do not need to leave a kid a dollar if you're going to disinherit them. In fact, it could cause more probate headaches than anything. All you got to do is just disinherit them, but mention them. Don't forget to say, oh yeah, I have this kid. They're just not getting anything. So check with your particular state or jurisdiction to see exactly what needs to be put into a will or a trust for those formalities to be met. And once you do that, you can go ahead and disinherit a child if you want. Like I said at the very beginning, nobody is entitled to part of your estate except a spouse. All right. So I, please, if you can, go ahead and click like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get more of this content. It really does help spread the word, and we want to keep this out there for free. So as I always tell my clients, please stay safe, plan ahead, and enjoy life, and whatever you do, make it a great day.